In this lesson, we're going to talk about probability. So what is probability? For example, perhaps you've seen something like this, P of A. What does that mean? This is the probability of event A occurring. To calculate the probability of an event occurring, it's equal to the number of favorable outcomes or outcomes that lead to event A occurring divided by the total possible number of outcomes. Now, before we go over some examples that talk about how to calculate probability, we need to talk about something called sample space. So what is sample space? The sample space is basically the set of all possible outcomes that can occur. So let's say if we toss a fair coin, let's say a quarter. What are the possible outcomes of flipping one coin? There's only two possibilities. You can either get a heads or you can get a tails. So the sample space for this situation is either heads or tails. Now, what if we wanted to flip, let's say, two coins? What are the possible outcomes? What's the sample space for flipping two coins? To help us get the answer, we're going to create something known as a tree diagram. So when flipping the first coin, we have two possibilities, heads or tails. Now, let's say if we get heads during the first flip. During the second flip, we can get another two possibilities, heads or tails. Likewise, if we get a tails during the first flip, on the second flip, we can also get heads or tails. So notice that we have four possible outcomes. So the sample space is going to be the first outcome, which is heads and then heads. So we can write that as HH. The second outcome is heads and then tails. So that's going to be HT. The third outcome is tails, then heads. And the fourth outcome is going to be tails and then tails. So this would be the sample space of flipping two coins. Now, for the sake of practice, what is the sample space of flipping three coins? Feel free to pause the video and try that. Construct the tree diagram to help you do so. So on the first try, we can get heads or tails. Now, if we get heads, it can be heads or tails. And if we get tails, it can also be heads or tails. Now, because we're flipping three coins, we need to do this one more time. So this could be H or T, and then repeat the process for each one. So here's the first possibility. We can get three heads. So I'm going to write that as H, H, H. The second possibility is getting heads, heads, and then tails. So H, H, T. The third possibility is heads, tails, heads. So that's H, T, H. The fourth is heads, tails, tails. So H, T, T. And then repeat in this process. We see that the next one is going to be T, H, H. And then T, H, T. T, T, H. And the last one is going to be T, T, T. So we're flipping two coins three times. So the number of possible outcomes is two raised to the third power, which is two times two times two. And so it gives us eight possible outcomes. So this is the sample space, which represents all the possible outcomes that we can get for flipping three coins. Now, the probability of an event occurring is always between zero and one. If the probability is zero, this means that this event 
cannot happen. It will never happen. Now, if the probability is equal to one, that means that the event will always happen. It also means that it has a 100% chance of occurring. If the probability of an event occurring is, let's say, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 times 100 is 30%. So it means that it has a 30% chance of occurring. So if the probability is 0 0.3, that means out of, let's say, 10 possible tries, we're going to get approximately 3 favorable outcomes. Because 3 out of a 10, 3 out of 10 is 0 0.3. Let's say out of 100 tries, we would get 30 favorable outcomes. So here's an example situation. Let's say that the probability of people who drive a blue car is, let's say if you have a, a certain population in a city, and if you randomly select a person, the probability of that person driving a blue car, let's say it's a uh, 0.20. So that means that there's a 20% chance of selecting a person driving a blue car. So if you were to randomly select 100 people, 20 people would drive a blue car. If you randomly select 1,000 people, approximately 200 will be driving a blue car. And so that's what probability tells you. But now let's work on some problems. If two fair coins are flipped, what is the probability of getting at least one head? Well, let's begin by writing out the sample space for flipping two coins. So it could be heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or T and T. Now, the event A is getting at least one head. So this one has at least one H, this one too, and that one as well. So the reduced sample space for A is HH, HT, and TH. So now let's calculate the probability. In order for the event to occur, we have three favorable outcomes. The total possible outcomes are four. There's four events in the sample space. So the probability of getting at least one heads when flipping two fair coins is going to be 3 over 4. 3 divided by 4 is 0.75, which means that there's a 75% chance for this event occurring. Now let's move on to part B. By the way, if you want to try it, feel free to pause the video. If three coins are flipped, what is, I forgot the word the, what is the probability of getting at least two tails? So let's begin by writing out the sample space. So let's write what we had before. It could be H, 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 T, H, T, H, H, T, 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 H, H, and so forth. So those are the eight possible events that, or outcomes that can occur in this event. So now let's call the event A. We want to get at least two tails. So which of these outcomes contains at least two tails? We have one, two, three, four. So there's four potential outcomes that have at least three tails. I mean, four, yeah, two tails. Kind of mixed my words up there. So let's write it out. It could be H, T, 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 H, T, 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 H, or T, T, T. So the number of favorable outcomes is four out of eight possible outcomes. So four over eight, you could reduce that to Eight is basically four times two. Four is four times one. So this becomes one over two. One divided by two is 0.5. So there's a 50% chance of getting at least two tails.
Now let's move on to part C. If three coins are flipped, what is the probability of getting exactly one tail? So go ahead and take a minute and work on this example. Pause the video if you want to. So let's circle which outcomes, or let's circle the outcomes that contain exactly one tail. So this is one of them, here's the other, this is another one, and that is it. So for event A, or let's call it event C, for part C, the three favorable outcomes are HHT, HTH, -H, and THH. -H. So the probability is going to be three favorable outcomes out of a total of eight possible outcomes. Three divided by eight as a decimal is 0.375. And if we multiply that by 100, that means that there's a 37.5% chance of getting exactly one tail if three coins are flipped. So those are some simple examples of how you can calculate the probability of an event occurring. Now let's move on to our second problem. A six-sided die is tossed. What is the probability of getting a two? Let's begin by listing the sample space. So here's all the possible numbers that we can get. It's basically one through six. Now the probability of getting a two it's just there's only one two out of six possible outcomes. So we have one favorable outcome out of six. And one over six as a decimal is basically 0.16 repeating. If we multiply that by 100, but first let's round that to 0.167. So this is approximately 16.7%. So that's the probability of getting a two toss in a six-sided die. Now what about part B? What is the probability of getting a three or a five? So we have two favorable outcomes out of six, so it's going to be two over six, which if you divide both numbers by two, you can reduce that to one over three. So this is basically 0 0.3 repeating. So that's a 33.3% chance of getting a three or a five. Now, what about part C? What is the probability of getting a number that is at most four? So let's make, let's list out the outcomes that leads us to this particular event. We'll call it event C. So that is at most four, what does that mean? So that means we can get numbers that is less than or equal to four. So one, two, three, four. So the probability of this event occurring, we could say, let's say if X is a variable, so X has to be less than or equal to four. That means getting a number between one and four where X is an integer. Or technically, let's say it's a natural number because integers could be negative. So there's four favorable outcomes over six. Four is basically two times two. Six is two times three. So this becomes two over three, which is approximately 0.667. So there's a 66.7% chance of event C occurring. Now, what about D, part D? What is the probability of getting a number that is greater than three? So let's list out the outcomes that favors event D. So numbers that are greater than three, that includes four, five, and six, but it doesn't include three. So the probability of getting a natural number that is not equal to three, but greater than three is going to be, we have three favorable outcomes out of six, 
6 is 3 times 2, 3 is 3 times 1, so this becomes 1 over 2, which means we have a 0.5 chance or a 50% chance of event D occurring. So as you can see, it's not difficult to calculate the probability of an event occurring. It's pretty straightforward, but with many examples, you can see what to do. Now, what about the last part, part E? What is the probability of getting a number that is less than or equal to five? So event E, numbers that is less than or equal to five, that's everything except six. So the probability of getting a number or a natural number that is less than or equal to five, it's gonna be five favorable outcomes out of six potential outcomes. So five over six is 0.833 repeating. So let's put approximately. So there's an 83.3% chance of event E occurring. So that's basically it for this video. Now you know how to calculate the probability of an event occurring. Thanks for watching. Oh, by the way, feel free to check out my playlist, statistics playlist. I do have more videos on probability uh, if you are looking for those topics, such as independent, dependent events, mutually exclusive events, conditional probability, and other stuff like that. Contingency tables and complementary events. So feel free to take a look at that, or you could do a YouTube search and type in that organic chemistry tutor, let's say conditional probability, and it will come up. Thanks for watching.